Hello， 大家晚上好。今天晚上开始直播了。好，进来的朋友帮忙分享出去哈。我们等多一个几分钟过后，我们就要开始进入话题啦。大家听到吗？听到的朋友在呃这个直播里面嗨一嗨一下哈。开始有人进来了哈。吃饱了吗？你们，上个星期有谁看我直播的、啊？有谁吗？有谁在看我直播？进来的朋友给我嗨一嗨一下。嗯，开始有人进来了哈。在我身边哈、哦，就是呃<笑> ，Professor James， 然后<笑> Professor James 跟大家嗨一嗨一下。嗨。<笑> OK， 这样 Professor James 也因为他自己本身是呃呃受英文教育的，所以待会他跟大家分享哈、哦，都是以英文的方式来分享。所以我从一呃我一开始的时候，我就用一个简单的介绍一下，介绍一下。关于呃呃，关于呃这个 Professor James 的背景啊，为什么今天我会邀请他来到呃中心这边做直播？还有，如果你们有什么东西问哈、哦，你们可以呃以华语字来打，然后或者英文也可以，这样呃我就尽量呃让他呃明白，然后可以帮助你们呃去回答。好、哦，如果你们有如果有东西要问的，好、哦。进来的朋友帮忙分享出去哈，开始有一些人数进来了哈，嗯，呃、所以今天讲的这个话题哈，是讲关于全新出发啊，英文就是呃 ，Professor James 今天要讲的呃，就是什么 Doctor Life Change。Yes, Doctor Life Change。像 Doctor Life Change 嘛，就是可能改头换面呐、啊。所以我来介绍一下，呃，呃，叶博士的一个呃背景哈，像他在呃从事教育业里面已经有呃多少年 ？How how how long you have been in education line? Oh my God, this is gonna show how old I am. <laughs> More than three decades. <laughs> three decades 啊，所以很久很久，所以他从事教育行业已经是非常久了，这样。在过往哈、啊，他都是在不同的大学里面教，包括呃，好像这个蒙古呃呃 national 呃 national university university of Mongolia， 然后还有其他的呃，在 UK 的大学啊，他都是呃这边跑那边跑哈、啊、<笑> ，visiting professor。在今天也因为很几几年前呐、啊。Mm-hmm. 因为呃，马哈蒂赢了这个选举过后啊，他就因为呃老马的关系就飞过来。像他的这些背景，我有做一个简短呢、啊，放在这个直播的上面。啊，在过往他不只是从事一些呃教育的行业，他同时间他其实有做很多不同的呃。做不同有做不同的一些呃咨询，好像关于一些他在过往他除了做教育，他除了在大学里面教书，他同时也是呃蒙古里面蒙古呃首相啊首相的一个顾问哈、哦，所以呃呃叶博士有很多东西要跟大家分享了，如果你们有什么东西要问哈、哦，你们可以待会呃。以华语还是英文呃来问，然后呃如果他可以答哈就是答，然后你们他会用英文来介绍哈，你们刚嗨嗨一下吗？<笑>啊 ，So 呃、uh, ，Professor James， you, okay. you can start。All right。Now， um， first of all， 呃、uh, ，我可以讲一点点华语 ，right？ And I can also speak a little bit Cantonese， 广东话 ，right？ But I prefer to use English because it's clearer, and、um, a lot of things is、uh, expressed better in English. Okay, so、um, we're gonna start.、Uh, first of all, I do not claim to be a medical doctor. I'm not here 
telling you that I am a cancer expert, I'm not an oncologist. But what I can say is that I have done a lot of projects in my life which involve cancer patients and different kind of patients like heart disease or any other kind of disease because I was based in Mongolia, I was in Kazakhstan, I was working in Germany and UK and so on and I often get surrounded by healthcare professionals and so I'm so happy to be invited here by Natalie Teo uh, to share about some of the experience um, that even though I'm not an oncologist but due to my background of being an educator of uh, mixing around with people who deal with the healthcare projects uh, I would find that I can share some useful experiences with you in Malaysia now I have never lived in Malaysia for a long time and I came back like Natalie says uh, during the um, big history changing election of Dr. Mahathir to become the Prime Minister and uh, I was very excited to, to come to Malaysia at the time uh, to see what's going to change over here. Um, I have been living like a nomad because I never lived in one single country. I, I moved on and on and on. But in actual fact let me tell you of a little, the, the, the real story of a little boy, okay? Now we start off with a real story. There was a little boy who was born into this world in a small little village. And that little boy was very sick. Because the mom who, who was uh, you know, giving birth to him was also uh, having bad health. So, so yeah, very sick, you know that? Oh, how do you know the boy is me? Okay, so anyway, so... so Alright. Professor James讲的一些东西不明白的话，你们可以在comment那边里面发问哦。那我就跟大家讲解一下。Yeah. Don't be shy. Just ask questions. Stop me anytime. Ask in Chinese or English or Cantonese. Okay. Now, so there was a little boy born some years ago. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, and. It was so weak and the mother was also very sick when he was born. So the doctor was worried that the little baby couldn't like, live for very long. Uh, it's got terrible lungs full of uh, mucus and it's hard to breathe, respiratory problems. And it was also a very underweight baby, you know, very skinny at the time he's born. And, and so they uh, used all kinds of machines to keep the boy alive like respiratory machine but because the hospital is so backward in the little town so they just try their best okay uh, so it was a miracle that the boy survived to grow up to go to kindergarten but I think the sickness and the fever the constant fevers you suffer from makes him unable to study and learn so the little boy could not even count say from 1 to 40 at the age of seven. No, nope, no counting skills. So the mom thought this boy would uh, grow up to be a dud, a fuddy daddy person, you know, cannot study. And, um, but little boy, he couldn't study, he couldn't count even from one to 40 at the age of seven or eight. Uh, he went to the small, small village school and was always in the D or E class and sits at the back of the class, okay? Skinny boy, always sick, always asking for doctor certificate to go back early, right? Now you can, can imagine. How can huh? be a professor? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't jump, don't jump the story. Now, what did the little boy draw when he was young? Okay, now I'll show you some drawings that are really old, okay? Now, a little boy cannot study, but little boy like to draw pictures like that, okay? Now, I don't claim this is drawn at the age of seven, but I think there was already maybe nine or ten years old. Very okay. Nice, so <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, he couldn't study, just pick up a pen and start to draw those old houses because you live in a little village where there's nothing new there. 
So there's another drawing here, I'll show it to you. It's so old. The cockroaches nearly ate up all the paper and there's water mark all over it. The cockroaches? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Actually, there were hundreds of these drawings, but most have been destroyed. Okay, so these are the no, no, when, when the cockroaches eat it or when the, the dampness, the wetness destroy the drawings, then the so of all the hundreds of drawings that was drawn when they were seven, eight, and nine, and ten years old, there's only a few left now. Okay, and these are some of it. And you can see this in Natalie's Health West Center if you visit the center. Okay, because we put these drawings here yeah. uh, to make the place interesting. So, but the strange thing is when the little boy reached the age of 12, some strange thing happened. His brain started to work. And uh, today is very strange. One of my friends, my old classmate, sent me a photograph of me when I was 12 years old. And I showed it to Natalie. I said, look, this is a very special photograph because this is the year when my class teacher went to the front of the class and pointed to, to me and said, you know this skinny little guy here who doesn't talk in the class, who doesn't play football, doesn't play badminton, cannot mix with people, don't have many friends, very quiet all the time. You know, he has performed better than all of you in the class. Look at his marks. He's got top marks for mathematics, for history, and all the rest of it, okay? So how did he do it? You know, it's a mystery. I mean, is he just studying and memorizing everything in the book? And I, I personally, uh, I, I don't understand what happened to my inner system when I was about 12 years old. I just like books, and I started reading and reading and reading. So I guess I pushed my energy from drawing pictures into reading books, okay? So, and I didn't even know that I have scored this kind of high marks at the age of 12, all right? And, um, well, okay, we're gonna move on fast. We only have 15 minutes left. <laughs> so to cut the long story short, okay, fast forward many years later, um, I was then, uh, yes, I, 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 I then started to live in America for a while. Before that, I was in Australia studying my university degree, and uh, I work as a, you know, it's very strange, you know, I'm good in art, but I studied science because I love the sciences. So, so I studied science because I wanted to be either a medical doctor or an architect, and I was qualified. I got the marks to enter good medical schools and architecture schools, but uh, there's a long story uh, why I became an educator, you know, which I, I'm now teaching on some uh, business schools like London School of Commerce and also I've taught in National University of Mongolia. I have gone to Germany to teach and um, so I, I ended up as a person who just like to teach, right? And I'm, I'm not boasting but there is a university in China called Longda, you know, it means China Agriculture University. It was ranked, Longda. Longda, Longda. right? <laughs> it was ranked top 10 when I was teaching there in the year 2002, okay? 2002, and Natalie is not born yet, I think. Um, 2002, uh, yeah. born. <laughs> yeah, and they actually awarded me with a special honorary certificate that shows that I'm the top three lecturers or professors in the whole of Nongda. So I felt I have a gift for teaching. So, and, and surprise, surprise, they actually have classes conducted in English in the Nongda, okay, in that agriculture university. They have a business teaching faculty. And that is the university is personally opened by Chairman Mao, Mao Zedong, you know, so it's a very special university. If you go to Beijing, you must visit the university. A lot of professors that know me and if you go there, I tell you, I'll ask the professors of Nongda to take you for a tour of the campus. That, you can take my word for it, okay? I got very good friends in that university. But to cut the long story short, so well, finally... I, I think I, yeah. uh, Professor James yeah. can share one thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, right. Because I think his life is very interesting. Okay. I think his life is very interesting. 呃,在他一生当中可能他会呃这边做很多事情哈哈 
。但是我觉得很精彩的那一个部分就是他在蒙古里面，呃，有呃过上一些什么的日子啊，然后在蒙古里面。可能有 explore 过什么啊，然后再、嗯、再想回来，其实这个东西是很好，因为我我看到 Professor James 跟我分享的那一段啊，在蒙古的哈，我觉得真的是哇，就是说对我自己的 impact 很大，因为我觉得哇，原来原始民族在在一些比较落后的国家，他们是这样子生活的，然后他们可以生活得很好，就算是现在 COVID。Corona 很多国家都中招，但是他们还是没有受到影响哈、哦。Can you share about more yeah, about、okay. the Mongolia one? I think everyone is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. That. Okay, for for you who have never been to Mongolia, and bear in mind, a lot of Malaysians say they go to Mongolia, but they choose Nei Mongol, which is in China, right? Nei Mongol. Yeah. Okay. Now that is got cities like Hu He Hao De or Bao To. Now, sorry, guys or girls, that's not. The Mongolia I'm talking about now. There is a Mongolia which is called Outer Mongolia, but the capital city is Ulan Bator, right? Now I challenge you to go there. All right, it's a different world out there. Sorry, they don't speak so much in Chinese there. Okay, but they speak Russian, English, and Mongolian. Right now, Russian. Yes,、English. because they were like under the Russian control for many years.、Mm. Now,、uh, Netflix is correct. That place has almost zero cases of COVID nineteen. All right. Now, the scientists tell us COVID nineteen is more active in the colder climate, and when the summer comes, and this hot, humid climate will destroy the, the this、uh, virus. But the funny thing is, Mongolia is not hot, is not humid, but the people don't catch. The virus. Okay, I know a lot of doctors there. I I used to do some work for the hospitals there. There's a very famous doctor called Dr. Jambalma, who was the health advisor to the prime minister. She has come to Malaysia three times. She's my good friend, and she's the one who sent me information on the health situation in Mongolia. So,、um, and it's it's strange. I think in people there, they are still close to nature. Okay, what one of the reasons why. From UK, Germany, America. Look, I've lived in Australia and UK, Germany, America, but I still prefer to live in Mongolia. I'll tell you why. I I did tell you when as a little boy I was a very sick boy. I was a sicky, right? So one of the worst problems I had was really my bones. You know, the bones has a this condition you never heard of before. It's called ankylosing spondylitis. All right, it is a disease where all your bones will join together and then you cannot move. Like Stephen Hawkins, the professor in 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 Oxford University, you become like you can't move. 就是说，每一个这个疾病哦，是每一个脊椎哈，每一个关节本来是有那个 flexibility 的嘛，活动性，它会把这些关节的那个部分呢，全部都会钙化掉，钙化掉，所以很多动作啊。呃，都没有办法，好像我们这样子弯下来拿东西啊，这样呃柔软，哦，就他也很 difficulties， right？ Yes， I， 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 my whole life I had to pop in painkillers just like candies， because、uh, if I don't eat painkillers， I cannot move my joints， it will be very painful， and it's due to my childhood， my imperfect childhood， where， you know， I never practice sports anything， never develop my joints， so。All the while, my father. My father is a person who loves me so much. And anywhere I go, he will ask me, "Are you in Germany?" I said, "Yes." He will DHL this medicine to me, right? So I will eat them up, and and that's how I kept moving, you know. Because without the medicine, I would be too painful to move my body. Now it was in Mongolia that I started to practice a different lifestyle. I started to do something called the paleo diet, which later on is more po popularly called the keto diet. Why? Because in parts of Mongolia, you cannot eat、uh, simple things like starch food, you know, which we take for granted here. No, no. Start. Professor James 讲的，呃，在蒙古里面哈，很少人会有疾病啊，好像他他以前从呃呃很严重的疾病，他。从呃一个很大的改变，是因为他们没有吃 starch 啊。starch 的意思就是说，呃，全部的淀粉啊，还有碳水化合物，饭啊、面啊、饼干啊、蛋糕啊，哦呃，就算是谷类哈，他也没有吃，豆类、谷类这些都算是 starch。Yeah, uh, you, you, 
you think starch, rice, uh, you know, bread, white bread is okay. But let me tell you this. The, the grain, the rice, the wheat that you eat today is different from 2,000 years ago or even 500 years ago. Because unfortunately, our scientists have done lots of wonderful things to it. And it's Frankenstein rice, it's Frankenstein wheat. And even animals like chickens, when they eat on the grain every day, they actually develop diseases. And that's why they have to give the animals antibiotics to keep the animals alive so that you can slaughter the animals and eat the meat. But in Mongolia, listen, all these goats and cows eat grass. Okay, and they run about because Mongolia is a huge country with a very tiny population. So all the animals get a chance to run about and eat the grass. And this is what I lived on for years and my whole body changed. All right. I tell you, it's a big change. I did my push-ups, you know, you know, push-ups. I could do up to a hundred times in Mongolia. All right, in Malaysia, now? I now only do 30 times because I've become lazy again here, nice and here and there. But once you go back there, it's different because the environment, the kind of uh, water you drink from the mountains, the spring water, you ride on the horse, on the green grass. Do you ride on the horse? On the horse? Yeah, yeah, but I fell down one or twice, okay? And I'm the doctor excited. says, if you fall again because you've got a background with ankylosing spondylitis, you are going to damage totally. You become like, you know, Superman? He fell from the horse. Oh, uh, Superman. Uh. Yeah, the original Clark Kent guy, I forgot oh. his name. And then actually he, he died sometime after that, you know? So don't fall from a horse, okay? So, but anyway, Mongolia is a place where if you do the, the natural way there, I mean, there is also a bad situation in Ulaanbaatar because the, in the middle of the city, they are not eating the same food as you eat in Malaysia. Okay? Why not we plan a trip uh, go Mongolia and we do the Mongolia therapy that what we have discussed previously, huh? Yeah. I'm so curious about Mongolia. I'm so curious about Mongolia. 很多好像刚才叶博士讲的很多那个那边的人他们吃的那些动物啊全部都是草食动物就是说他们不是吃谷类的哦现在到处哪里的如果是只要是我们去supermarket买的去养的大多数都是吃谷类的都是吃玉米
they always blame cancer on per makanan, right? Which is the things we eat. So, so yeah, when you eat that sort of food, you get sick, right? In Malaysia, why the cancer cases are rising, the heart diseases are going up, diabetes is a huge problem, is because we eat so much tasty food here, all right? We're gonna die of tasty food, all right? I mean, so we eat the not tasty food. Lah. Yeah, you see, I was very shocked when I lived in the nomadic tribes in, in Mongolia. I, I live in the Mongku Pao and I, I, I live like them because I want to learn about the traditional lifestyle. That they don't add seasoning to the food. They just put meat into water, they boil it, right? And then they put a bit of salt and they start eating. Well, they right? just eat with salt, boy. Eh? Exactly, and they're used to it because from babies they're brought yes, up so like yeah. that. They don't put Ajinomoto, they don't put sugar, anything. In fact, when, when food is, is sweet in Mongolia, they reject it. They're not used to sugar. Okay, they, don't, they find sugar a bit strange, okay, the, the, the sweetness. So they are all used to like uh, saltiness. And then later on, they learn about using vinegar from, chi from North China. Right, like Beijing, Beijing, everybody adds uh, vinegar to food, right? So, and that's the main seasoning in the north, is salty or sour. The sweet comes more from the south of China. Uh, they got a sweet tooth for everything, right? And the starchy food as well. So, I learned a lot of things in Mongolia. I also learned why Chinggis Khan can conquer nearly the whole planet from Europe to Korea down to North India. It was all big territory by Chinggis Khan and his sons, you know. That happened in the year uh, 1200 something. It's also got to do with the diet. When you eat the right food, you become the world conqueror. Why? Because when you ride on the horse, nobody can compete with you. The way you deal with the horse is incredible. And your eyesight. These Mongolians, traditional Mongolians, the eyesight is so sharp, when they shoot the arrow riding on a horse, they can hit the target just like that, okay? Now, all this, you see, the, the food side of of, of science is never studied in great detail and of course lifestyle okay when when you have good food then you have an active life so you know the yeah? Mongolian when you are at Mongolia yeah you know some anyone still can like do riding on a horse and hunt for the animal only if you go to the outback that means you have to go to the tribes what, what is outback uh? that means like in australia you got outback right it's it's <laughs> where people don't build cities and farm far yeah you have to woods, to go outside. out because when, when you go to mongolia i always say don't go to ulaanbaatar and live there in a hotel you know that's not mongolia you have to go to the outback you have to go to where you have the mountains the grass the oh, rivers I right Ula, yeah <laughs> and you have to experience the deep cold. In winter, that is the coldest in the world. Minus 45 Celsius. Wow. Or you say wow, minus 45. Yeah, yeah, minus 45. You mean, you mean you. only, only when huh? winter? In winter, the temperature drops down very, very cold. But you might think you might die minus 45. But no, actually, we call it dry cold. It's different from like in London, where it's only plus 5, but you're shivering because it's wet cold. Okay? It's four or five Celsius. When it's winter, no, uh, when it's not winter, what's yeah. the normal temperature? Well, they have a short summer time. It's not long summer time. So they still get like 25, 26, right? But that's only about two months, right? And then most of the time it will be closer to 10, 11, 12 on average. And in winter it goes really cold, okay? Mm. Yeah, but I also think that is the reason why it keeps them strong. Because when you have a very extreme temperature, your body learns to adapt. Yeah, I you know? agree. Yeah, your, your body is not like, oh, every day is 30 Celsius, 26. So your body sort of like gets lazy. Get and some shock. La. Yeah, you need some like shock that. treatment. Up and down, up and down like that. Exactly. So they are stretched to this maximum and then they're stretched to the other side. And so the body become like a like a elastic, you know? So, so how can the diseases even live to to kill you because the, the diseases will die with these kind of extremities right so that's another another reason why i think why the mongolians managed to take over china they started the yuan dynasty and they rule over all of china 
you think they only know how to fight, but Mongolians at that time have a lot of brains. They were good at managing the empire. They plan everything properly. Is and it still available? Like, like just now you mentioned all the, this place. Even like not in the city, if you plan a trip, go there. Yeah. You see all this still available that we can go and see mm-hmm. and what they do. Uh, like live in a what Mongku Bao. Yeah. Um. You, you know the one of the former prime ministers of Mongolia is Mr. Bad Bo. Okay. I don't know whether you're gonna hear me, Mr. Bad Bo, out there, but we are good friends, and you know that, right? So. Mr. Bart Bolt is the same age as me and when he became Prime Minister, I went to his house and we often chatted about all these wonderful things and now he's an example of, of a Mongolian who is a really smart man okay because he he made the economy grow at 18% highest in the world the GDP now you were asking the question do you still find these traces of the great Mongolia like Chinggis Khan time yeah. Well, the problem is Mongolia, you see, they went through a, this great time in history during the Yuan dynasty, as you know. But later on, everything started to go down, just like the Roman Empire, right? All these great empires, they don't seem to last forever. But the one thing is, even though they don't have the greatness of the empire now, but we can learn about how they live close to nature. And that the only way to do that is, let's say we have a group of people from Malaysia and we plan a trip, let's say in the month of September. I think September is a great month, okay? The time um, to do Corona. Um, <laughs> there's still no Corona in, in, in Mongolia. People there do not know what is COVID-19. You can fly out. Uh. Yeah, but Malaysia may have a problem because our government don't allow us to fly. But let's say September, they allow us. Let's say a group of between 10 to 20 people, uh, we can organize a trip because all my good friends are there. I can even ask the, the former prime minister to say hi to Malaysian because, wow. yeah, he, he's a great guy. Okay, Mr. Batmo, somebody know. Okay, that's the way we say hello there. Um, we are buddies, okay, because in London, we spend time together, right? And then later on, he went back and he, you know, he was very fortunate. Uh, he became uh, the PM. But in any case, uh, we can organize a trip there, okay? We can live in the Mongku Bao. Okay, don't live in a five-star hotel, I'm telling you. Live in the traditional yurt, all right? And eat the traditional food, all right? And, and go out there and live like a Mongolian, right? And then you, you will you have a life-changing experience. I'm not exaggerating. This is what happened to me. And that's why after just going there, I decided to stay on. I became a lecturer there. I work in National University of Mongolia. I love those students because they are very creatively minded and I love to teach them and a lot of them have gone to USA and UK and they studied there after I taught them they went further out the one thing they like to do is travel Mongolians they travel Mongolia lady very beautiful (laughs) oh wow 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 talking about beautiful now let me tell you something about beauty. <laughs> because okay. uh, uh, with the kind uh, p- the previous case. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> don't mention that. Okay, that that's that's censored, right? <laughs> the main thing is if nature is beautiful, the people will be beautiful. Okay, ugliness is partly caused by a badly polluted environment. All right. I agree. Yeah. So if you got a pristine environment where everything is pure and polluted look the scenery is so fantastic of course you are gonna have beautiful people even the skin is better yeah yeah and you don't have all these uh things like that's why there's no COVID 19 in mongolia right mm. uh, and and uh, and if you follow the mongolian diet the same diet which chinggis khan had actually i wanted to write a book called the chinggis khan diet you know and i think it's gonna sell because people are going to say, oh, Ch- Chinggis Khan, I thought he only fight and kill people. But uh, he's going to teach you how to eat food correctly because we follow the diet during the uh, time of the traditional Mongolians. And you will learn a lot of things. And it's very similar to keto. All right. And it's, uh, but it's, it's got more because uh, there's also the water that you have to drink correctly. You know. So he- 所以Professor James有講 
蒙古的原始民族在吃的东西的方面哦，其实很像我们一直以来在推广的生酮饮食哦、嗯。其实只是因为呃，很多人把这些饮食把它简化成为生酮，但是其实在很多一些呃。比较古老的地方哈、啊，没有怎么讲现现代的一些人跑去，呃，被发展哈、啊，他们都是其实都吃着很原汁原味的东西，连肉都是打裂了，放点盐煮一煮就这样子。哎，我我是觉得哦，呃，这个话题很大，然后我、哦、，How about can we divide like， 呃、uh,。呃、uh, ，this chapter next week can talk about the Mongolia therapy or。So people can、uh, know more about what tribes or, or or the second place that you have went through and different different places. Yeah, it, as long as the MCO problem is not cleared up, I cannot fly out of Malaysia, <laughs> right? So I'm stuck here. So I I may have to you know carry on talking about these things, right? Yeah. But the moment they lift up the MCO, you know, no more quarantine and all those problems. I'm going to Mongolia. Ah,、uh, yeah, they got Wi-Fi, ah.、Uh? Oh yeah,、That's, of course. Can do the, can do the. <laughs> no, I mean that would be that would be great. Let's say I'm in Mongolia. I'll straight away、uh, show you all the things there. I can take out the food, show you in the front of the camera. I can show you how they cook the food,、uh, and I can have the most Mongolian beautiful girls play the. The special、uh, instrument and sing their song. You know how they sing songs in Mongolia? It is the most unique sound. I'm not exaggerating because they sing two octaves above、uh, the human voice and two octaves below. That is incredible. That kind of sound, no normal human being can make. Okay, so come with us to Mongolia and free yourself from diseases. Okay. Anything else you want to add on? I don't know. You said、Or、sometimes the, they ask the, questions. Yeah, you have some things you want to ask, ma? Because not every time they will ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit shy, aren't they?、Yeah. Right. But、okay. normally the question will be come in is、yeah. after the normally my live finish and、yeah. they will、uh, directly、uh, PM message private. Ah, okay.、Message. They do it privately. Yeah, yeah just yeah. just PM the、oh, message. Yeah. I will even prepare some answers. Uh, but my life is on, not only about Mongolia because、uh, there are many things I want to share with you. But the time is very short, right?、Mm. Uh, I'm also trained in social psychology, and I actually work at、uh, in some good London、uh, colleges and help some some students in LSE to to score distinctions in the subject. So I I have things to share on that, right? And and a lot of these things because Natalie has a very、uh, a very good Uh, center here, where people are coming to deal with diseases like cancer, diabetes, and cardiac problems. So there are things that, even though I'm not a medical doctor, but I can link her up with good therapies, natural therapies, and even good stuff that can come from places like Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Kyrgyzstan. My work is not just Mongolia. I've been all over Central Asia, from Turkmenistan to to、uh, Azerbaijan. I've been to Russia many times. I love the Russian people. I still can speak a little bit of Russian. the The problem with language is once you stop living there, you forget a lot of the language. But but once you go back there, you start practicing the language again. So it's 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 wonderful to travel. Okay, and and if you have a chronic disease or what, think that you can travel. Don't stop traveling, because sometimes it's a mental block that tells you you cannot be cured. It's just a negative、yeah. element. Once you travel and you see other cultures, the whole world opens out to you. You become more optimistic.、Mm-hmm. A, a guy like me, who was so sick as a young boy, and many times the doctor wonder whether I could survive. Today, is bouncing around Mongolia, going to China. I've been all over China. I go to Europe very often, and when I come to Malaysia, I don't walk up the stairs like Malaysian. When I look at a, a flight of stairs, I run up like a little boy. You know, I love running now. You know, because suddenly I feel, you know, I'm 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 like I'm given a new yeah, lease of life. Yeah, you run faster than me, lah. <laughs> well, anybody can run faster than her. Okay, that's for sure. And and by the way, I've seen some cartoons drawn by this wonderful 
lady. <laughs> and I'll show you what some of her work is. This, this is great, all right? Can you see this? Yeah. This is a cartoon drawn by Natalie, right? And it's very simple, but the simplicity is where it has the most meaning, all right? So this is why it's good to keep our life simple, it's not about being a billionaire or how many millions of bucks you have in the bank account. It's really about living life to the fullest. Okay? To the fullest. To the fullest, okay? You owe yourself and you're obligated to live your life in a richer way, not in terms of dollars and cents, but experientially. Go out and help people, right? Go there and educate people, make them recover from illness, teach them something. And, and travel. By all means, go traveling, all right? And you'll have no diseases after that, okay? I very agree. La. So, I'm very grateful today, Ye Fosu, to share some of his little parts. I think it's only 10 minutes. Because we don't have a lot of time. 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 We don't 哦，就是他只是分享他人生当中的可能一小部分罢了，所以我们接着下来，我们还会再安排多几个呃直播，给他关于讲其实，呃，他一路来人生当中的一些感悟，因为我觉得每个人哈、啊、在人生当中都会有不同的呃不同的觉悟和、哦、觉醒。但是对于呃，我认识了这个 Professor James 过后，我觉得他是这么在这么多人群当中哦，我自己的朋友群子当中哦，他是在他的人生当中是最平衡的，最平衡了，最 balanced 的，所以我很喜欢他处事的那个方式，好、啊，处怎么去处理与问题啊，所以很多时候呃，遇到什么问题啊，还是被现有什么问题啊，可能都都通过他。好，会可能会想到一些呃启发，可能我们觉得哎呀很懊恼啊，其实哎呀为什么今天发生了这么这样子的事情啊？为什么那个人这么对我啊？好，可能就是有时候他给你的几句话过后，你发现到啊是哦，用不同的角度去想，有时候我们想要呃讲讲，有时候我们想要呃渴望的东西很多。的时候，哎，我要这个做，我要那个做，我要他这样这么这样子对我的时候，我们要求很高的时候，自己很辛苦嘛，对不对？他告诉他告诉我，哦，不需要要求太高，哦，有时候呃，饱的话就吃，有的吃就饱一点咯、哦，饿的话就吃少一点咯、哦，是不是？哦，呃，有衣服穿就穿美一点咯、哦，没有衣服穿的时候就穿的随便一点咯、哦，啊、哦，所以。变成就是说，人生当中啊，我们就不用去那么去那个叫什么这么紧啊，好像很紧，一直去拉扯拉扯这样。我觉得呃，如果你们有什么东西想要跟呃呃叶博士分享的话，或者有什么东西要咨询的话，你们可以去到呃我的 Facebook page 那边，你们可以发问一些呃呃一些东西，或者来到我们的中心跟他咨询也是可以哦。它是在我们的中心里面是其中一个哦，关于 psychology 的那个部分哈。哇 ，intro very nice。Okay, uh, so I know the time is up, but、uh, you know this shows you you know I'm not born so recently. So, but when I was a kid, ta da 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 We just love that music, you know. It goes on in our brains. So we have a art therapy part, is conducted by Professor James. Some are children or adults. Through different art therapy, you can find out what my inner thoughts are. My inner thoughts are able to see what your inner thoughts are. My inner thoughts are able to see what your inner thoughts are. 呃的一些想法，像我们的今天直播就到此为止，谢谢你们大家呃观看，谢谢你们的时间。呃，关于到一些有一些人如果要上来咨询的话哈，一定要 call 我的呃 ，either 是 send message 在我的直播的 page 那边，或者是 call 我这边的 office 号码来做 appointment 哈，因为我们这边的 appointment 呃很多时候啊 ，either 是呃，他不在，或者是我不在，或者是有时候 doctor 阿妈不在哈、啊，所以都是要以一个 pre appointment、pre book 的 appointment 才能够找呃咨询哈。
，像我们的今天直播就到此为止，谢谢大家的时间，晚安，拜拜。